Hey guys, welcome to Coding After 30. I'm really excited to start this new series because I want to do more stuff to help those of you who are just starting out with JavaScript to get better. So welcome to JavaScript Coding Challenges for Complete Beginners. I think that's a good way to put it. So in this series, we're going to talk about all these different solutions so you get to practice doing more JavaScript because at the end of the day, that's the most important part. And it's something that will start prepping you guys to be able to feel comfortable solving whiteboarding questions on a whiteboard. Now, we're not going to start super complicated and a lot of these questions I get from Code Wars. Code Wars is really awesome. If you haven't used it, that's a great place you should be spending a lot of time. But to start this series out, we're going to start with something not too crazy, but also not too easy. If you never used Reduce, we're going to work on solving is an array of numbers. Once you sum all those numbers together, is it odd or even? or even or odd, who knows? But let's jump right into it because I don't wanna waste any time. Let's take a look at it. Here we are inside Code Wars and we're starting with 7Q, Kai, whatever you want to say it, challenges. And basically they are still on the easier side, but I think for a lot of us, it's a great place to start, especially if you're just starting out. So let's take a look at the requirements. So your task is given a list of integers, determine whether the sum of its element is odd or even, and give your answer in a string saying it's odd or even. And if the input is a zero, make sure that you have a case that handles that and the function does an error out. So here are some potential inputs. If we receive a zero, we want to get an even output. If we get zero, one, and four, that should be odd because zero plus one plus four is five. And if we get input zero, negative one, negative five, that should be even because that's negative six. Instead of doing the code here, I'm going to jump into my next window and we're going to get started. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste our task so we could kind of think this through and figure out what we need to do to accomplish this goal. So here we have our array of numbers that we want to test. Let's paste our instructions and comment them so they don't look ugly. So let's define a function to encapsulate our logic. We're going to call it is even or odd and inside we're going to pass our array. We know we have this case if the input of the array is nothing. So we want to treat it as zero and return it as even. So a great resource for you to learn how to do some of these things is MDN. So what we need to do is have a way to check the length of our array. Believe it or not, there's a method dot length that comes in all the array objects. And you know this because of this amazing resource called MDN. If you're ever not sure if anything exists in JavaScript, this is the best free resource to go and see how things work. So if you have an array of four items, all you do is arrays name dot length, and you're going to get the length of the array. So we're going to add a check. If the length of the array is equal zero, we want to return even. So let's set this to an empty array. Let's call our function, pass our array inside, save it as results and conselect those results. We should see even and sure enough, we have even. So the first step is done. So next step is to have a way to test if a number is odd or even. And the good news, JavaScript has a modulus operator. I hope I pronounced it right, but it's amazing. So basically what the modulus operator does, whatever number goes evenly into another, whatever is left over will be the remainder. 12 divided by five will leave a remainder of two. If this was 10 and 10 divided by five, then the remainder would be zero. If there's a remainder, the number must be odd. So in this example, four divided by two, two goes into four evenly. So there's no remainder. So the output is zero. So this is going to be our test case. So let's add that logic here. So I'm going to hardcore the value first. So our total is two. Basically we're using the modulus operator that we just learned about. Two divided by two does not have a remainder. So then it's even. If this were to be three, and we divide three by two, well, two doesn't go into three evenly. So we'll have one remainder. So in this case, this is not going to be equal to zero. So we return odd. This is a ternary operator. Basically, if this condition is true, then return this. And if it's false, return this. It's basically writing if and else via shorthand. So let's test this out. So we're going to add a return statement here. Now let's comment this out first so it doesn't break because we just want to test this piece of code. When I hit run, if 
the total is three, it's odd. And we could see it here. Let's change it to two, run. And now we see even. So this works perfectly. So our second step is done. The final step is just to get the sum of all the items in the array. So let's add those items back and let's uncomment this out. And to accomplish this, we're going to use an array method called reduce. This is a great example. So if we have an array, and this is exactly what we're looking for. We're not gonna copy and paste this, but it's basically what we're gonna write. Notice how reduce method, here we go. We have an array, we call the reduce method, and we pass a reducer. Reducer has two values, accumulator and current value. And before writing the logic here to add those together, I'm just gonna console log them so we could see what they are. So let's add this to our code. So here we wrote a simple function that we called reducer. It's gonna take an accumulator and a current value. And we're gonna console log those items. So here we are, we're going to run that reduce method on our array and inside here we pass our reducer function and we're going to set our accumulator to zero, meaning that when this runs, the initial accumulator is gonna be set to zero. So let's run our function and see what we console log get. We're still not adding anything together, but let's see what we get. And we get an error. And obviously I already see that I didn't spell current value correctly. Make sure that you double check your spelling because it's a big gotcha. So let's run again and notice what we have currently. Zero one, because it initially gets our accumulator from here and our current value is one. It's our initial value in our array. Then we go two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, and so on. The reason why this is undefined because we did not return anything in our function. So let's return our accumulator plus our current value run again and what we get is the accumulator is the sum of the numbers so 0 1 equals 1 1 plus 2 equals 3 3 plus 3 equals 6 6 plus 4 equals 10 and so on until we get to 29 plus 1 equals 30 so that's going to be even and the last thing we want to do is replace our total with this reduce function and now our code should work. So let's test it out. Let's clear the console, run the code again. And so we get 29 plus one is 30. So we get even at one. We all know it's odd. Here we are, we have odd. If we add two, we know that's even. Here we have even. And then if we put zero because of our check, we get even. So let's review the code here. So first thing we did is we created a main function to encapsulate all of our logic. That's very important to do. Then we check if the array is empty, we want it to return even. Then we used our reduce method and you could look this up on MDN to get more practice with it. It's very important. And that reduce method takes a reducer. We could shorten this by changing this into an arrow function, which I'll do in just a moment. After this reducer runs, we get our sum saved into a total. Then we check if the total has a remainder, then it must be odd. If it doesn't and it's equal to zero, then it's even. Now, if we wanted to change this up, we could actually get rid of this and pass this function directly. First, gonna change it into arrow function to make it nice and elegant. And then I'm going to take that function and I'm going to pass it directly into our reducer. What I've been doing is separating the logic to make it look more prettier. And you could even write this more concise but this is where we're going to leave it. So let's put a space here, put a space here. So when we read this function, it's very easy for us to follow the logic. So here we are, we've done it, we did it. I hope you guys had fun learning. When you're starting out, the most important thing to do is to try these problems on your own and give it your best shot. The reason why I do it this way and I show you what I do is I search for things that I need to do. And using MDN, as you saw, Mozilla Developers Network, I guess is what it stands for, is amazing place if you're not sure if, how to do something in JavaScript search it there and you will find it so I'm gonna do more of these videos like it if you liked it if you want more I'm still gonna do more because it's great for me to practice some of the JavaScript fundamentals and I know there's some of you out there that this is gonna help so with that being said subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time lots of love always bye